A scientific theory is a well-established explanation of a part of the natural world that's backed up by evidence that can be demonstrated through repeated testing. So the Big Bang Theory, for it to become a theory, it needs to have evidence that supports it. I'm going to talk to you about three important pieces of evidence. There is others, but these are three really important ones. The first one is called Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation. For the first 380,000 years after the Big Bang, the universe was an intensely hot white fog of hydrogen plasma. Photons of light were bouncing around and being scattered by the free protons and electrons, so light was not able to escape this white fog. When the universe cooled sufficiently for neutral atoms to form, this is the period called recombination, the universe became transparent and electromagnetic radiation was released to travel through space. This energy has been travelling through space ever since. It is getting colder and colder and is now only a few degrees above absolute zero. But it can still be detected with very sensitive telescopes. Looking out into space and therefore back in time, scientists detect a faint, cold microwave radiation that fills the universe in all directions. This supports the Big Bang because it's evidence that the universe must have been denser in the past and therefore at the beginning of time it must have been a point of infinite density. Interestingly, cosmic microwave background radiation was discovered by mistake. In 1963, two scientists were measuring microwave radiation from the Milky Way and they detected this unwanted interference. They thought it was pigeon droppings on their antenna. So after they cleaned it off, they found that the signal, this interference, was still there. So they realised it wasn't actually interference at all, it was a proper signal. The second piece of evidence is red shift. The Doppler effect is when waves increase their wavelength when the waves are travelling away from an observer. With sound waves, this means that the pitch of the sound gets lower or deeper because low pitch sounds have a longer wavelength. Think about that ambulance that passes you and the siren gets deeper as it goes further away. With light waves, the colour shifts towards the red part of the spectrum because red has a longer wavelength than blue. Even if light is not in the visible spectrum, the increase in wavelength is still called redshift. In the early 20th century, the American astronomer Edwin Hubble identified that the distant galaxies were redshifted, and the more distant the, the galaxies were, the more they were redshifted. This is evidence that the universe is expanding, and that's a central principle of the Big Bang. The final piece of evidence is the Hubble Deep Field Image. This image was created by the Hubble Space Telescope in 1985. Now it's a series of exposures over a 10 day period. The telescope was pointed at a very small section of the sky, one twenty-four millionth of the sky. It's like the side of a tennis ball at 100 metres away. It was a section of the sky with only a few visible stars from the Milky Way. So the Hubble Deep Field contains over 3,000 objects and all of them are distant galaxies. Now some of these galaxies are the most distant galaxies ever detected and many of these galaxies have a high redshift value indicating that they're moving away and the universe is expanding. The most distant galaxies in the image are irregular in shape and very small. This suggests that these galaxies are immature. This supports the Big Bang theory and does not support the alternate theory of steady state because all of the immature, irregular galaxies are the ones that are furthest away. In a steady state universe, the immature galaxies would be evenly distributed throughout the universe.